I'm Maria Menunos, and you're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Hi, y'all. It's Amiria Sai. You're back with AfterBuzz for Gay Twitter, honey. We're doing it. I'm here with Ryan and Ollie, my love, and also another one of my new loves, Glenn from Camp Getaway on Bravo. You literally, Glenn, are giving me life. How are you guys, all of you? Oh, I'm so good. Thank you for having me. Doing good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I couldn't tell. Did it, did it mirror freeze? <laughs> um, <laughs> All right. I think we... I might have frozen. <laughs> I think I might have frozen because Brian was stuck in a pose. Um, I was like, so, hi, how are you? <laughs> you know how the internet is these days, honey. I'm a little older than all of you guys. Listen, I remember a time with no internet. So here we are. Um, oh my God, can you guys imagine if we were doing this without internet? Like if, if COVID <laughs> happened like 10 years ago, oh my God, we all, <laughs> no, no, we would have like jumped out of a window by that, by now. <laughs> Absolutely. We to a video <laughs> store to go through, Ooh, to get through yeah, that. Yeah, we have to go to Blockbuster. Oh my God, can you uh, imagine? And go into oh. the, um, what is it called? Alternative entertainment section and <laughs> to get, Gotta you know, pull like, that drape open. <laughs> yeah, <ooh. laughs> Yep, yep, yep. I mean, you're absolutely right. We're lucky to have internet. So let's dive in. So um, we've never done this before, but I just wanted to dedicate this episode to Bad Bunny. So if you don't know, Bad Bunny is a Latin rapper and uh, he has like done a lot of coverage on all of the trans murders and violence that's been happening in Puerto Rico during quarantine. There's been 108 cases of trans um, you know, and he's been that, and I just love an ally. So I just wanted to dedicate this episode to him. Um, he's adorable. Go check him out. It's Bad Bunny PR. Am I really freezing that much? Huh? I'm so sorry. Okay. So basically, I wanted to dedicate this episode to Bad Bunny, Puerto Rican Latin singer. Amazing. He has brought a lot of attention on trans violence and what's been happening during quarantine because a lot of people are not in safe positions. And Bad Bunny has been amazing uh, to do that. And I think it's absolutely wonderful. Um, so just wanted to dedicate that episode to him. We have a lot of hot topics to get into. The internet has been working overtime, I feel like, this last week. It's been insane. Um, so I saw this TikTok where the sister, you know, helps her brother not get outed. So we're going to kind of break that down. Uh, it was a super sweet TikTok. Um, a Nebraska woman is suing all gay people. Yes, you heard it right all gay people. So she literally went to the Supreme Court and is suing all gay people. So we're going to get into that. I really want to dive deep into that. It's insane. Like she's nuts. Um, and then the star of Lone Star 911 posted a video that really had mixed messages. So we're going to get into that. We're not going to talk bad about Ronan. We're, listen, he apologized. We're going to get into it, but I want to break it all down for people that saw it all over Twitter. Um, and then we're obviously going to do uh, our special segments. We have Brian's Pop Diva Dish with Katy Perry. She released, you know, new music. Very exciting. Um, and then Ollie's going to give us that breakdown. You know, Ollie read all about it. This couple that broke down, broke up on Twitter. It's very dramatic. <laughs> there was a breakdown and a breakup. It was a lot. So I want to really dive into, you know, whether or not we think this is real or is it a hoax. We got to dive in. So it's going to be fun. And then we're obviously going to do an interview with Glenn. Um, from Camp Getaway, my new favorite show. I've been, you know, watching and carrying along and it's been super fun. So we're going to dive right in. But before we get to all of that, how are you guys doing in quarantine? How are you, Glenn? What are, how have you been keeping busy? Oh, thank you. I've been good. Um, so I've actually started, um, like, writing more content. Um, so I've been making these little, like, mm -hmm. uh, parody videos after every episode. So I talk about what you saw in the episode. So, and then what you didn't see, super outrageous. Um, and so I actually have a lot of fun making those. So I was making a bunch today. Um, I'm finally getting into making TikToks, like, cause I'm an old man and I'm finally <laughs> getting into it. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to do something creative every day just to keep those juices flowing. And that's just been really fun. Awesome. I love that. That's amazing. Um, so let's dive into our first topic. We had this um, girl on TikTok, now that you brought it up, perfect. Um, she basically, there was this whole incident, the TikTok to break it down for y'all is basically her brother is putting the dishwasher away, like kind of cleaning out the dishwasher and the dad's like, what's grinder? And she kind of broke it down. It's all of her, all the parts. And then she jumps in and says, Grap. and she's kind of become the unofficial gay icon of the internet. Cause she kind of helped her brother to not get outed. 
Um, so what did y'all think about this TikTok? Like, what are your thoughts about this? Um, we'll start with Ollie. Uh, it was cute. It's a really cute concept, uh, <laughs> not to discredit it, but it's like, it's a TikTok. Like, was this planned? Was this staged? I'm such a, what's, what's the word? I'm so skeptical. Uh, skeptical, yes, of TikToks. Cause I mean, we all are on TikTok, right? So we kind of plan and create, but if it wasn't, then that's great because no one wants to be outed. I think outing is probably one of the worst things you could do to mm -hmm. anyone under the spectrum. It's all about themselves coming out when the time is ready for themselves within. Um, but yeah, like it, it's like, I'm also thinking like, how old is this kid? Like, is this kid like 17 on Grindr? That's not okay. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, it's he needs to go like on Tinder. I, I was like watching Degrassi one time and they had like an app and it was called Tinder. It was hilarious. Tinder. But, <laughs> regardless of whether it's real or fake, you know, it's, it was cute. It's cute. And I hope people can follow suit of that because we know TikTok can be a little homophobic, right, Amir? True, like, come on. true. <laughs> yes. yes, you know how I feel about TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> um, I um, thought it was lovely. Um, I also, I just, you know, think back to my own siblings who are allies as well. Um, I call my sister and tell her about my horrible sex stories all the time. So <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it's just fun to see, you know, more allies because Honestly, just like not to get like so deep and everything, but just having such a supportive family who like supportive is one thing, but people that embrace it is like another, like a whole other level. Um, so I just love seeing that in the world in general, just keeps siblings, family members, friends, supporting people on the spectrum, like you said, Ollie, because it just helps people on the spectrum to feel comfortable, feel seen, and I love it. So more, more positive LGBT TikToks, no more homophobia on TikTok, please. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. Absolutely. And I think it's, it's you know, the person that made the TikTok is also living with her girlfriend, is an out lesbian. So I think this family hopefully is going to allow their son to come out and, you know, we'll all update you if I hear anything else. But we do need to get to this topic from Nebraska. So this woman literally filed a civil lawsuit against gay people, all gay people. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> I don't know if this is a joke or like, is this, is this, you know, B-I-T-C-H joking? Mm -hmm. So I need to know what y'all think. Ollie, do you think this is like just a cry for help, a cry for attention? What's going on? People, I always just think, you know, the skeptic that I am, people want to go yeah. viral. They want that clout so bad. <laughs> uh, and, uh, but honestly, like this, she sounds like the biggest bigot in the world, but I mean, mm -hmm. she's against, she already has four people against her right now and they're in the Zoom meeting right now. Uh -huh. So <laughs> it's sad because she brings up like religion and whatnot. And I, I'm someone who like respects people, religious beliefs, as long as they're not like discrimi discriminatory, I can't talk. Um, and it's sad because there are great allies in religion and she's just bringing up the hate within. It's not religious. Like she, you're not being religious. You're just being really hateful and you're just using like religion as a tie to bring down the queer community. And I'm like, Karen, I don't forgot her name. I'm just calling her Karen. Karen. She, Karen. Yeah, she, she's a She Karen. needs several seats because she has a whole community uh, up mm -hmm. against her. You know, it's not just gay yeah. people. We got the bi's, we got the lesbians, we got the trans individuals mm -hmm. against her. So. Mm -hmm. Karen, Karen, the Karens need to have several seats in COVID-19. Take yeah. a seat, Karen, because you don't want to come for us because you won't be eating, you won't be getting your hair done, you won't be getting your contact lenses, bitch. You will not be getting it. So, That's so real. Better sit your ass down. Yep. <laughs> That's hilarious. Our, our producer, Brianna, we shout out to her. We love her. She is our uh, straight ally. She put five people are in this group hating her because- <laughs> Yes! <laughs> That's so, true. You know, we even have our straight allies who are like, what the hell? Like this girl is really out of her mind. It reminds me of the Super Bowl when there was this man kind of, you know, from, I don't want to say Nebraska, but that similar vein. <laughs> um, he sued, I don't know if it was the NFL or Jennifer Lopez for making him feel like some kind of sexual way. And I'm like, are you people like serious? Like this is like, <laughs> insane. Oh, so it's just, like you said, Ollie, I don't know if she's just chasing clout or she's just truly out of her damn mind. But yeah. girl, girl, get it together. JLo, yeah, JLo worked that poll and I think he wanted to work that poll with her or something. Right, yeah. <laughs> like actually, like yeah. follow, follow suit of her. Like, let's be real. Let's be real. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> let me push y'all right over the edge because she has a quote. I never thought oh I would God. see a day in which our great nation, okay, and our own great state of Nebraska, which I, listen, no offense to Nebraska, but I've never heard Nebraska as the great state of Nebraska, but anyway, um, would become so compliant to the complicity of some people's lewd behavior, homosexuality is a sin, period, end of sentence. Listen, girl, where did you get that shade from? The gays. 
Period. <laughs> just, end of sentence. Wow. I'm just so curious, like, what was her pushing point? Like, what was her breaking point? Like, there must have been something that she was like, oh, that's it. Now, now they've had it. Like, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make a lawsuit. Like, what did she see? Like, queer eye for the straight guy. Um, you know, like she saw that. She's like, oh, that's the last straw. Or like, you know, she saw some two guys walking down the street holding hands, and she was like, nope, that's it. Now is the time. I, I, now I'll show them. This will teach them. But I want to know what was the straw that broke the camel's back. I think Seriously. I can tell you, Gwen. I think I can tell you. I think it's honestly the multiple seasons of RuPaul's Drag Race. I'm here for it. <laughs> We're getting drag race after drag race. And this woman can't r get away from the drag. We have We're maybe. Here. We have drag Dragsificent. We got a lot of stuff going on. So I, yeah, yeah, maybe got, that's it. Yeah, I mean, oh, yeah, All Stars season 12 and uh, The Celebrity. I mean, she's not wrong. She's drag. <laughs> so. Come on, Drag Race. <laughs> yes, what Drag Race. Listen, I love Drag Race. What if it was about Camp Getaway? Right. <laughs> what like, if, that's what it. if it's my mm. fault? Bravo, yes, I've had Glenn. it. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. That's, I'm Glenn, sorry, that's I'm sorry, a great, guys. That's a great plug for your show. I love yes. that. You know, your show caused a civil lawsuit from the Karen of Nebraska. I mean, listen. <laughs> I am yeah. here for it, you know? And I, I just want to take a second to thank all of the anti-Karens who are on our side, who watch <laughs> this gay Twitter panel and are giving us life, like, subscribe, and comment. Um, Brian is in the live chat. If you have any pressing comments, let us know. And uh, we are here for you guys uh, every week. And go to Apple Podcasts and give us five stars so we can get more amazing guests like Glenn. Give us five stars. <laughs> we love it. Okay, Brian, are you, do you have your seatbelt on? Because we're going to the 911 <laughs> territory. I know, I know, I know. We have to dissect this. We have no, to break I do, it down. I do. Let's talk about it. Before we do, I just want to give a disclaimer. I am not either against or for. I'm just giving you the facts. And I mm -hmm. love Ro Ronan Rubenstein. I love the show. I love what they're doing. There's a lot of trans visibility, Muslim visibility, and gay visibility on that show. So I'm not knocking it. But what happened was basically, just so you have the backstory, Ronan Rubenstein, um, who's on the show and he plays Rob Lowe's son and he has like a gay love affair on the show and it's super sweet. Um, but basically they were filming, it was like 6 a.m. and he decided to take a blanket and wear the hijab that one of the characters, Marjan on the show wears. And he said, do I look hot or does Marjan? And everyone's laughing and I can hear Marjan laughing as well. So I know that like, even though she's not Muslim, she's still Middle Eastern, there's, there's like, there was no like hard feelings the way he did it. Um, but I think the problem with it is that the hijab is I'm Muslim, it's sacred. So like when you make fun of it, like a lot of Muslim people were very upset. Um, mm -hmm. And then people were really upset and kind of calling him out. And instead of like apologizing, he started blocking people. Um, I think that's when things went wrong because he wasn't listening to the Muslim people that were speaking up against it. Um, so I just want to quickly um, read just a couple of those tweets because um, this is his apology. Um, just before I get your opinions, I want to give the full story. So he said, it was 6 a.m. We were blasted with freezing fake rain all night. I was tired, cold, and delirious. The last thing, which is in all caps on my mind, was offending anybody, all caps, all caps. But I did, and that cannot happen. My own hope is to spread positivity and love. And I am, and it's like, so, 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 so sorry. I love you all. Which is great. But up top, again, it's defending kind of why you did it. So I just, I want to just like, I wanted to give the whole story. And then someone said, um, don't know what this is about, but I'm like, we love and support you. There's a lot of support that was coming in, even if people didn't know the backstory. And then just one more quick tweet. Um, I just want to give the other side. Okay, so this is someone saying he made a video wearing a towel for a job and said, who wore it better, Marjan or TK? When the video was brought up, he started hiding people's replies to him about it and blocking people who were tweeting him about, let the Muslims speak up. So I thought that was kind of nice. Like, I think it's really important that you hear all sides of things. Mm -hmm. um, so now that I've given you the full story, um, I would love to start with Ollie and kind of get your um, opinion. And there's no wrong answer. Yeah, because I see both sides. Uh, first and foremost, I wasn't familiar with the show. I don't know who Ronan is, but I know Bryant and Amir, you like are fans of him and he's been on After Buzz, right? So he's like mm -hmm. kind of like tied to the After Buzz family and whatnot. Uh, I think my thing is like, um, well, first off, he's like so gorgeous, but I digress. Um, <laughs> I think my main issue with it is like, yeah, he apologized, but I think when you apologize, just apologize. You don't have to defend yourself and defend your actions. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I'm so sorry. I was, uh, uh, I was acting my butt off in my dream job. Like I was delirious. So it was cold. And so like, he seemed fine in the video. Uh, and that's no shade, but like, 
and like the people recording, it's not just him that are laughing. So there's a lot of things to take in consideration. Just apologize. Like, I don't think he's racist. I think he was being a little culturally insensitive for sure, but just apologize. It's so simple to apologize. Oh, I was, I, that was wrong. I was being culturally insensitive. Don't try to defend any of your actions because at the end of the day, like it, it don't matter. Like just, I'll have more respect if you have just, if you own it hundred percent that you were wrong. People make mm -hmm. mistakes. People, you know, I'm sure I've said things in the past that I'm look, looking back. I'm like, wow, that was really ignorant of me to say. And I learned my lesson. So all you got to do is apologize. It's, he's lucky that he's not like super, super famous or like this would be a bigger story than it is, you know? So it's good that he's making mistakes now later, m m more than like later, you know? So, and I'm happy that he did apologize, even though he should have just apologized, you know, without the defense that he was trying to put himself in. But yeah, that's totally. like on it yeah well said i think it's, it's really important what you said about like this could have been a bigger issue and it's good to learn those lessons and like now then later. right because the thing is like there are people who are still relevant quote unquote on twitter that uh shouldn't be like i believe in cancel culture like he shouldn't be canceled ronan but there are people that are worse like way on worse. twitter sh that should actually be canceled who say worse things and do way worse things than ronan did mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely well said it's true yeah, you know, just to time in a little bit, I 100% agree with what you said, Ali, and, you know, I don't want to jump into it too much, but just looking at it from this perspective, it's obvious that it it affects people in different ways, you know, these mm -hmm. kind of things. So obviously I can't speak on it not being part of Muslim culture. So someone like you, Amir, it obviously hit mm -hmm. home with you. So I 100% appreciate your perspective. And I obviously, like Ali said, he just, he should have just apologized and called it a day. Um, that that's completely it. You know, I, I it's crazy because I think you know he did interview with AfterBuzz, and I think I talked to him on this same day, which is really crazy. Um, so <laughs> yeah, so it's it, it was you know I love him, and I'm not going to speak ill of him, but I 100% yeah. agree with you guys. And his he he should have just apologized, and he affected people in in that community in a different way. So I can't speak on it. Mm -hmm. It's well said. It's like I think it's important that when you say something, and you know we've had a lot of people say homophobic things about our community as well and a lot of times like Kevin Hart are quick to defend it it's just comedy get over it and like again I understand that but when you say in your tweet it's because of the rain and, and then like as mm -hmm. a Muslim person I'm like just say you're sorry and like that's it like you didn't delete the video for a long time and again I like the show and I support him and I I don't think we need to cancel him because he did take ownership but I think we moving forward like Let's avoid, listen, I'm a stand-up comedian. I don't make fun of any races and I still make people laugh. So I think you can, mm. you, you don't need to make fun of sexual orientation or like people's races to be funny and relevant. Um, mm -hmm. So just let's try not to do that. It's just, it's a try. We, we're not perfect. Like, and to be 100%, I want to be very, like, very, very open with you guys. Like my cousin sent me a tweet that I had tweeted like four years ago and I said the word tranny. And so I went mm -hmm. back and deleted the tweet and I like, I'm very honest about like, I use that word and it like, it's, I thought it was funny and like, it's not, you know, like you learn, so you grow. So I think it's being honest about that growth and not trying to hide it and to apologize when you're wrong. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think just owning it, like I think, and he did that. So I think we're not going to like, you know, we're not definitely going to bring out the pitchfork. So um, mm -hmm. I'm still going to watch the show and I hope it comes back. And again, like I said, the show has great, great videos, season two. So <laughs> yes. So we're here yeah. for it. Yeah. Um, let's move along if there's any last thoughts because these topics were kind of heavy. Um, if there's any last thoughts, do you guys want to wrap up? What do you think? Should we move on? Ronan, you're good. Like, hello, love you. But <laughs> it's a, it's a He's good adorable. It, it's a good lesson for everyone, I think, at the end of the day. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. And I'm not gonna lie, when I was doing the research, I was like, I kept getting stuck on these shirtless pictures of Ronan. So I'm not, <laughs> listen, <laughs> I'm I, not I was very happy either. to make our thumbnail because I was like, oh, more pictures of him. Sure, let's just, let's find the perfect one. <laughs> yes, I love it. Um, let's move on. If Bryant, you're ready, shall we do our Pop Diva dish? Yes, all right, so excited. Obviously, every week we bring you Pop Diva Dish, talking about the latest and all the Pop Divas. This week we're talking about Katy Perry because she is back with some new music. So exciting. Daisy's is out. I love the song. It's very uplifting. Um, I've been a Katy Perry fan throughout her career. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it's great to have this song, especially now in these crazy times. Uh, gay Twitter seemed to love the song. The comments under her tweet were pretty positive. They were all loving it. They were here for it. Um, but Amir, I know you actually weren't a huge, huge fan of the song when it dropped. So tell me your thoughts. Oh. Listen, I love me some Katy Perry, like swish, swish, bish. Like it made even, I think we, I think we added at least a hundred thousand more gay men 
just from that song <laughs> alone, I was like, oh my God, where did all the gays come from? So I think that song produced a lot of gays, which I'm here for. Like she is like, <laughs> I mean, she's so smart and she's so random. Like I remember when that video came out, a bunch of um, like, they, I guess they have a union of, um, what, what do they call people that eat other people? Oh my God, why can't I remember who the word Cannibals? Oh, cannibals? Cannibals, yeah, oh a group God. of cannibals <laughs> got mad at the song because in the video she gets eaten up and then she becomes the soup. So like oh. they were like, this is anti bon oh. That's Bon Appetit. Bon Appetit. Bon Appetit. Oh. I was like, I'm wait, confused. where did she get eaten? <laughs> I'm confusing my Katy Perry. Let's get back it's to the okay. topic. I got, listen, I love Katy Perry. So I got lost in the Katy Perry soup, I guess. Yes. Um, she, that song, like Brian said, super uplifting. She like has this strong message. And in the video, she, we see her pregnancy. Like we see her pregnant belly and she looks beautiful and she looks happy. And I... I'm just like here for her. And then she did her American Idol performance with all those, like she did on Zoom, but it was like so well done. Mm -hmm. I don't know. She, I'm kind of here for her. I like her. I've always liked mm -hmm. her. Yeah. It's Glenn, how about you? Do you love Katy Perry? Uh, I do. I, I got to see her at the Barclays Center in New York. And it was <laughs> one of the most ridiculous shows I've ever seen. Like every <laughs> single song was a whole new fucking like wonder scope. Um, mm -hmm. Like it was unbelievable. All the shit she put on stage. It was amazing. So I haven't heard the new song, but I'm really excited too. Yes, I, I think you're gonna love it. It's so great. The music video, like you said, Amir is so, so cute. Like she's so cute and pregnant, love her. Um, Ollie, how about you? <laughs> I think I'm mostly, I like the song. Uh, I didn't really like her last album. I forget what it was. I'm a Katy Perry fan, the, the Bon Appetit era, for example. But I feel yeah. like this era that's coming, I don't know what it's called, or I don't know, pregnant era. Like I'm really <laughs> interested because it's like a new Katy Perry. This is a new stage in her life. She seems like so, she seems the realest she's ever been at this point and maybe that has to do with her pregnancy and how happy she is like the whole uh her last song that she released it just it was so breathtaking you know um so I'm just excited I'm excited for Katy Perry like I'm all for about like teenage dream like old school Harry mm -hmm. Katy Perry. yeah <laughs> Katy Perry but I'm excited because this gives me a little bit of like more about like the person that she is so mm -hmm. I'm excited like nonetheless I want more music for sure from her Yes, I love it. Her last thing was actually, it was called, I think, White Dress. Yes, it was about her, her engagement. Yeah, that one was yeah. amazing. And like you said, it just speaks to her person, her character, who she really is, what she's really going through. Um, so I love her and I'm so excited for the next album. So yeah, that's Poppy with Dish. We love Katy Perry and can't wait to see more of her. Oh, love her. Yes, Katy. And she has like such pretty eyes and I actually know her stylist. So I'm always like, give me the, is she like that in person? He's like, literally, she's like a cartoon character come to life. <laughs> so and that. she's yeah. fun to style right like she like he's like i'll bring her like like the hamburger for the Met gala like he brought her like like the hamburger without all the rhinestones and she was like i'm not wearing this he's like it's a hamburger that's couture she's like you need to put diamonds on it <laughs> yeah so she's real extra i love it um that's awesome well thank you brian that was super fun and i i love you know anything about the pop diva queens of our era so we love it um bra uh Let's move on to Ollie. Let's do our segment, Ollie's Read All About It. I want to talk about this couple, like, because it's a lot to <laughs> Right. Well, I don't know if they're a couple anymore, but this couple recently went viral on gay Twitter. They are known as MJ and Corey. And basically, in a nutshell, if you, if you don't know what's going on in this story, MJ is all about, like, like uh, monogamy and whatnot. And then Corey, he's like, yeah, let's try monogamy. But eventually, I'm going to want to, like, have an open relationship. All right. Basically, that's, like, the, that's the gist of it. So they end up kind of posting, like, this series of this, their relationship in quarantine and come to find out they are breaking up in this most recent video. And MJ is crying. There are people, like, dragging them, saying this is, like, Oh, why are you sharing this? Why are you being so open on Twitter about, you know, your, your breakup? Is this even real? Because it seemed a little staged. Some people were calling out, this is some Tyler Perry production. <laughs> I don't know, like level of acting. And that's no shade to Tyler Perry, but I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of Tyler Perry. And some of the acting is a little, uh. but I just want to know your guys' thoughts. Like, is if it's real, should they be sharing like their relationship this raw and unedited? Or if it's fake, like, why are they doing this? Is this for clout? Like, well, what's, what's the deal? I have to chime in just because I'm so sorry that I keep laughing, but it's just I keep thinking of the video because it's like so you said, crazy. Ollie, it's just so outrageous. I'm like, is this really happening? Like, what is this? It was so crazy. But you know, if it's real, I, I'm so sorry that I'm laughing if they broke up. Like, <laughs> hard, hard to see you guys for real. But I, I think it could be real. And 
I think quarantine is just making everybody like nuts um, mm-hmm. and wanting people to kind of share, like people are wanting to share more than ever. So right. I think that's kind of what's going on. You know, they want to kind of sh- share their story with other people, and, you know, maybe get caught in the process. So it was interesting to see. And it, I mean, it gave me some entertainment. So that's all I'm going to say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I mean, listen, Brian, I totally like second that. Like it was pure entertainment. When I first came across it, someone was making fun of it. They were like, when they run out of bread at Whole Foods or something. And then I clicked it and I was like, is this real? And then I went back to the profile and I'm like, this is a real like situation. Mm-hmm. And people were kind of dragging them. Some people were saying, it's making, you know, black queer couples look bad. Like people were really bringing race into it. There was a lot of stuff that went down and then it, even him crying, but then being like, it's good to get your tears out and then kind of making it like a talk show segment while the boy- Confessional, there. come on, confessional. <laughs> I was oh like, God. what's happening? I like didn't understand it. Listen, I'm someone, I mean, Ollie and Brian know, I share every part of my life except the bathroom. So I would probably <laughs> do this. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Like mm-hmm. I would probably do this. But I don't know if I would be so nice and so like mature and so like, what did we learn from this relationship? You're like, get your shit and go. Like, what? <laughs> get the hell out. Like, <laughs> what are we doing? Like, it was bizarre. It was bizarre. And then it looked like the the guy that he was breaking up with that didn't want the monogamy. He was like in the sweat. He was like kind of like waiting around for maybe a second go. Like he was trying to get like some breakup sex out of it. He was just kind of like, are you done with your video? Like, <laughs> get to getting. <laughs> like, what's happening? I, I the whole thing was just. That. so maybe they'll get a movie deal out of it you know? oh, yeah come on Netflix <laughs> but it, it also just kind of brings up that uh, that topic of like dating as a gay man um mm-hmm. like how some sometimes in a relationship one person wants to be a monogamous and then the other person wants mm-hmm. it to be o- open eventually or open to begin with and there's nothing wrong with like an open relationship practice safety like you know absolutely mm-hmm. but it's it's something that's really tough that I've experienced myself. It's like, oh, like how do we navigate this relationship? And you know, it's always just like the other person might want something differently than what you want. So mm-hmm. it's very difficult. And I find it also as crazy as it is, it's a little bit relatable at the same time because of like the different wants and needs of gay men, you know, especially in quarantine. I don't recommend an open relationship in quarantine. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, that's, that's like not. not the right time. I don't think it's the right <laughs> time to explore um, your relationship, I would say. Um, mm-hmm. But on that topic, Ali, you brought up something really good where I think a lot of gay men will be like, yeah, let's go open like within a month of possibly dating. And I mm-hmm. think that I've tried the open relationship thing. And I think communication and, and a lot of, you don't have to be in love, but I think you have to respect the other person because I've tried the open relationship and like my ex said hi to someone and I was like, oh, you slept with him? Oh, you slept with him? <laughs> because there was no communication. And he's like, I've never even seen that guy. And right. believe it or not, like I went through his Instagram and listen, this is back in the day, Instagram, you had like 300 followers. So I went through all of them and I was like, I don't see him. Like, okay, this is good. Like, so you have to be very secure. You can't be jealous. You sure. Can't, like, mm-hmm. All of that. So I think, I think it seemed like the guy that was recording I mean, again, I don't know if he's taking it or not, but it seemed like he had a lot of emotion. Like he reminded me, remember that girl that cries in Mean Girls? And they're like, you don't go here. I thought it was her. He was just like crying and crying. And I was just like, your boyfriend's like ready to leave. And he's wearing gray sweatpants. And listen, if you've been on TikTok, you know that man's gonna bounce back with some gray sweatpants real quick. Mm-hmm. So I was like, don't cry over this man. Like, let mm-hmm. him go. Like. And I just, but you know what I loved about this whole video and like all jokes aside, I love that like they're doing this, but all the boxes are like perfectly packed. Everyone's ready to go. Like I was like, y'all are not, there's no mess. Like there's not <laughs> even a single thing on the counter. Like, so I thought that was kind of, I was like, oh, okay. This, that's why it felt staged to me. And a lot of people were like, are the boxes empty? Like, there, you know, when you move, you write like kitchen, like there was no writing on the boxes. <laughs> Dang, gay just... Twitter is like a freaking a spy. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they're Nancy Drew the shit that. out of this. <laughs> yeah, we Nancy Drew that, I, I was getting close. I was like, I was like, uh, like continuity. I was like, was this shot in one frame? Is that the same red tank top? Like we got deep. production value. Come on, Steven Spielberg. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Yes, we go deep. Yes, honey, we got to check that continuity. I mean, listen, so I think that like, we'd love to hear your comments about this story because it is becoming a whole thing. And let's be honest right now, as we're doing this, I'm thinking of a TikTok idea. I'm like, I'm going to cut in some Tyler Perry, honey. I'm going to cut in some, you know, Kim Kardashian from the Tyler Perry movie. I have some ideas. So I think that they could, you know, get their own podcast off the ground. And listen, you know the gays, honey, we love some partnerships. So they might get back together for a podcast. 
So we'll have to wait and see. We will have to wait and see. Um, thank you, Ollie, for that. That was really fun. That was a good, um, that was a fun segment. I know. I'm ready for the next release. Like, the next 10. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be them, like, on a Zoom call, like, separately talking about dating. He's just going to be crying. And he's going to be talking about dating. So it's going to, we're going to have to wait and see. Um, but let's, so yeah, that was our show. But we're going to dive into some questions for Glenn. So um, if you haven't seen Bravo's Get, um, Camp Getaway, it is it's in the name it's a getaway like I literally because we're in quarantine it was so fun to see camp and to see you know like it, the the surroundings of my first hand job I was like oh this is like memorable like you know you just <laughs> it just take camp just takes you back <laughs> oh, like, you just take up you for back. a second Amir, and all I heard was hand job and I was like oh <laughs> yeah, was, that's a bad not where I was to expecting for up. that to go but you know, right, you know <laughs> that works too camp is a lot of people's first you know hand job so listen I don't know why I keep saying it I can't stop saying it um <laughs> and I'm sure I'm gonna get dragged for this but I just, I think that camp for a lot of people is, a, and, and all jokes aside, is a place to explore your, even your sexuality and to be comfortable in who you are. And I always remember like camp, I never got made fun of for talking feminine or being, I, as long as I could play around and get in the, you know, the lake and do all the, the, the chores or whatever, you were part of camp. So I think that I love what you guys are telling. And obviously your camp is for adults. So it's like allowing people to kind of relive their inner child. So the first question I have for you is what about camp? spoke to you like did you ever go to camp as a kid like what spoke to you um when you were growing up like around camp yeah I absolutely did so I went to a couple different camps which says a lot about me so the first camp I went to was Camp Thunderbird which oh. is kind of like um Camp Getaway like it was an adventure camp so there was like water um events and then I almost said water sports and I was like <laughs> 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 oh, 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 don't yeah, say that on like, game Archie. twitter honey mm -mm. right yeah so there was you know hand jobs and water sports um <laughs> So there was a lot, like, but it was a lot more sports, and like they separated the guys and the girls. And I remember feeling perfect. Like, I talk about it on the show. Um, there's this really tragic photo of me with a rat tail, but it was like let out. So like my hair is long <laughs> in the back because I was obsessed with Joseph Gordon-Levitt at that age, and so I really wanted a ponytail like okay. he has in um, *Her Dark from the Sun*. Anyway, <laughs> I digress. Love that. So, I love that. <laughs> um, I I got made fun of. I didn't I, I didn't feel comfortable in that camp. Now, I also went to a nerd camp and a choir camp. Those ones I felt a lot more comfortable. So like, Cute. this was kind of my chance to be like, you know what, I wanna be the counselor that makes everybody feel welcome. And like, no matter who you are, um, and that's kind of our job is like, people come in and sometimes they feel, they start off feeling a little apprehensive, especially in New York City, everyone has these like social bubbles around mm -hmm. them. Um, and so we gotta like pop those bubbles and, it's the kind of place where you can go up to someone and be like, hey, what's your name? And in New York City, you get pepper sprayed for that. <laughs> so it's fun to have, like, to be able to do that with people. And I think it's so important um, uh, to be able to play. Like, mm -hmm. I think we ignore the importance of play for adults, but mm -hmm. it's how you relate to people. It's how you relax. It's how you like unwind. And I think sometimes we say like, oh yeah, video games or that kind of stuff, like that's frivolous and it's not important. But I think it's so important. And just seeing how people are at the end of the weekend versus the beginning, it shows how mm -hmm. important it is. So I mm -hmm. hope that like people get to feel that and kind of do that as they're watching the show as much as we do living it. Well said. I love that. And I think it's that inner child comes out when you can play and, you know, not party and play, but play. Oh, yeah. so let's make that clear. <laughs> let's make that clear. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So I think it's being able to play and being at camp, I think, is really wonderful. And I wanted to ask you, what was like a high point and a low point, like the rose and the thorn? Obviously, we haven't seen the whole season, but, you know, with filming or being involved with the show, what was like a pinch me, like high moment? And what was kind of a low point where you were like, I'm, this is a lot or something? Yeah, so um, I've, I've briefly talked about this in some of the promos, uh, and you see it in the trailer. I have a breakdown moment. Mm -hmm. um, this summer, I, I learned, uh, I was going through some stuff. Um, my, my dad passed away in January. I'm sorry to hear that. And, thank you. And, you know, it, it's funny because I got to the summer and I was like, you know, I, I had this amazing adventure. I went to Vietnam. I came back and I was like, cool, I'm I'm done with grief. I'm done. Like, it's been eight months. I'm good. <laughs> We're over. Bitch, grief had other plans. So sometimes I deal with it well and sometimes I don't. 
And so we're going to see a moment when I don't. <laughs> so <laughs> I, that was my absolute low point. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm nervous to see that on camera, but I think it's important because, you know, stories are messy. Like if, if your life is perfect, like you're not doing it right. Like you're, mm -hmm. you're not taking chances. You're not putting yourself out there. Um, and so I think our stories are messy and I think we learn from making mistakes. Like, like we said, you know, earlier today, like it's not about not making mistakes. It's about admitting when you make a mistake and growing from mm -hmm. it. So I think you get to see that with me in this show. Um, and my high point was um, almost the opposite of that. So a moment when I, I did grief well, I, we had a talent show and we couldn't use um, copyrighted music because um, we'd have to pay for the rights to use them. So we couldn't like sing, we couldn't do a dance. So I decided to write an original song. And so um, I wrote an original song uh, about coming to terms with my grief. And it was the first time wow. I'd ever written a song on guitar and I performed it for everyone. First time I'd sang in like probably over a year. Uh, I was so freaking nervous, but it was amazing. So that's the one I'm, that's the thing I'm looking most forward to is those two moments, almost two sides of the same coin of the same experience. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's funny that you said that because I was actually thinking when you were talking about, you know, that breakdown, I think that's going to be a lot of people's high point because they're going to connect to you and be like, it's okay to have emotions. I think it's okay, like, especially as gay men, there's this idea of being like hyper masculine sometimes. And like, mm -hmm. even your nails, like I love your blue nails and owning your feminine and being able to cry. Like that's powerful. Like I think a lot of um, queer people will look up to that. So I, I appreciate that a lot. Um, thank you for sharing that. And then Brian, do you have a question? Um, I want to know, cause I haven't got a chance to see Camp Getaway yet. Um, I know you said it's not over yet, but what would you want people to like take away from it or like someone who hasn't watched the show, what can they gain from it? Yeah, absolutely. So I think um, one thing that I'm excited to see, like we are only on the third episode um, and sort of as the, the show unfolds, we'll see more and more. Um, you know, I know for me, this summer was about like connecting with these people. Like it's, it follows eight camp counselors on adult summer camp. And by the end of the summer, these people were some of my best friends. Mm -hmm. Like I am so close to some of them. I trust them with my life. Um, you know, we shared as an, an experience that mo a lot of people don't go through. Um, it's hard to explain what's like being on a reality show unless you're actually in it. Mm -hmm. And so you guys as an audience get to watch us become best friends. Mm -hmm. And in a time when I think we are so desperate to feel connection and we feel so isolated in our own homes and whatever, um, I think it's gonna be really exciting to watch us connect and see, you know, it's, it's, it's sometimes messy. There's like a family, like it's not always um, sh sunshine, s'mores and smiles as David <laughs> says, but um, you know, by the end, we're gonna have best friends out of it. And I think it's gonna be really exciting. That's what I'm excited to see. And I hope, you know, you guys get to see that too. Yeah. yeah, some kumbaya fire around the fire. Like we, we, oh, we love yeah. that. <laughs> For sure. We will definitely be having some of that. And so, obviously yeah. it's on it's on Bravo, right? So how is it being a part of like the Bravo family? And why do, and like it's kind of like a two-part question. Like, why do you think like Bravo is just kind of like so inclusive to like the queer community? Because like there's so many like the, the audience, half the audience is like gay men, you know. So what is like so special about being a part of Bravo, you think? Yeah, so I think those are actually two different questions. Um, right, I'm a mess, oh, sorry. In, oh, no, 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 First, being in the Bravo family, I've actually loved like talking to people. So like, um, I've been talking to uh, Amr Kapai from um, uh, Family Karma. Um, oh, I love and I, him. And I connected with Josiah Case from, um, from Below Deck. And so we're actually working on something I want to, I want to do like sort of a Bravo round table talking about like during Pride, I will talk about like what it's like to be, you know, a queer person on the Bravo show, what our experience has been like, um, you know, talking with fans. I want to hear what their reaction to their fans are, especially like Amrit. I think it's his show is so important uh, representation wise. Cause like, we mm. don't get to hear about like sexy Indian guys in the gay community, <laughs> like so fucking important. Um, mm. So I want to hear like, what's his, uh, also has it been, has it been a pushback from the Indian community in his show? Mm. So like, I want to, I want to hear all the tea on that. Um, mm. So that's been really cool. Like I've loved, you know, hearing from fans, but also hearing from like other uh, Bravo celebrities. Um, mm -hmm. And I think, honestly, I think the thing that draws queer people in is we love strong women. Mm -hmm. We live 
for a strong woman. That's why all of our pop stars are strong women. Like mm-hmm. all of our mothers, mm-hmm. we connected with them as kids. Like mm-hmm. all of our fag hags that we <laughs> Yeah. You know, like, totally. we would be like Brianna. <laughs> we would be nothing Brian. with yes, our straight allies, you know, we'd be nothing <laughs> without the fruit flies that took us to prom, you know? Or like our sisters that help us, you know, keep us from being out of by our dads. Um mm-hmm. All whole lives have been defined and uh, almost guided by strong women. And so I think Bravo does a really good job in highlighting strong women. And so I think that is what draws us in. I love that. I mean, that, yeah. we all want to be like, let's be real. We all want to be like a housewife, like a real exactly. housewife. Always, yeah. We do. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna lie. I want to be on the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills one day. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Well, what a great time. Let's, if you guys have your tagline, let me know what your real housewife tagline. Do any of you guys have that? Glenn, do you have a housewife <laughs> tagline? Love to hear uh, it. So I think one of my favorite quotes that I've had on the show so far is um, uh, better to beg for forgiveness than ask for permission. Yes, mm. yeah, that's a good one. I like that. That's a good one. Brian, do you have one? Um, I don't know, is it, is it, like, a, is it like a catchphrase? It's like a catchphrase. So like, it's like a one-liner. Like mine is like, the most low-key thing about me is that I'm fully extra. <laughs> like that's mine. <laughs> so, like, um, I always like say a... that I'm ready, willing, and able. Um, that can use different, de- a lot of different uh, you know, terms <laughs> and a lot of different meanings. So that's probably mine. Uh, <laughs> I like that. I, like I that. love it. I've said mine before. The only thing toxic about me is that I'm constantly intoxicated. Like, yes! <laughs> like I'm a mess. I'm sorry, but that's my. I love that one. What a great <laughs> place to end. I mean, thank you, Glenn, for being here. Um, tell us where um, the people, the good people, can follow you, um, so they can keep in touch on Instagram yeah. or Twitter, etc. For sure. So um, you can follow me on Instagram at northgg. I'm on. T- uh, yeah, Twitter. I was like, where am I going? Um, I'm on Twitter, Glenn-North, and I just started on TikTok. You can follow me at Glitter Glenn. Glitter yeah. Glenn, yes. Yes, yes, yes. And when I talked to Niall from Cam Getaway, he said, I can't get the glitter out because I he roomed with you. So I was like, listen, uh, the gay men come with glitter. That's just, mm-hmm. that's, yep. I think they're all, I like, I can only imagine what the camp still looks like. They're probably still finding glitter in random places. So you're welcome. I'm <laughs> sure. I am sure of that. Well, thanks again, Glenn. And then, um, Brian, where can they follow you in the meantime? Yes, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok at the Brian Santos, and catch me on AfterBuzz TV's Quarantine with the Stars. You can also check out my interview with Ronan Rubenstein if you want to. Bye. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Plug it, honey. Plug, plug, plug. Um, we we still love you, Ronan. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely do um and you know last but not least ollie love where can they follow you you can follow this hot mess express at ollie dreamer on twitter and instagram at ollie dreamer <laughs> awesome and you can follow me at amir yas underscore on instagram twitter and tiktok listen i do i need a lot of validation so go give me some comments and likes and um <laughs> thank you for being here for gay twitter we're going to be here every week covering all of the juicy topics that flutter around gay Twitter. And yes, I said flutter and it's fine. So I love you all. (laughs) Be safe in quarantine and we'll be back next week. Bye. Bye. Thanks for having me. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menounos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. (laughs) The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.